Hey uh, folks, just a quickie for you, because um, either this works and it's solved and that's the end of the video, or it doesn't work and I'm at the end of my uh, troubleshooting here and I don't want to spend all night on this. Um, but anyway, I did a stream a while back when I was trying to fix some uh, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance SP consoles and I stumbled upon a limited edition Famicom one that I promise is what's in this shell because I took the Famicom one apart to clean and then never ended up putting it back together. Um, still on my desk in pieces, but anyway, this is that SP that kinda sorta boots. When you get into a Game Boy Advance game, it starts loading and then it just stops and it freezes on this screen. I've only ever tested it with Pokemon, but it does this on every single Pokemon cart I have for Game Boy Advance. And if we test it on Game Boy Color, <gasps> where'd I put it? Oh my God. Every freaking time without fail. Anyway, if we test it on a Game Boy or Game Boy Color game, It'll pass the logo check, and then it'll just hang there pretty much indefinitely. That's, uh... Th this thing seems pretty consistent in its not working -ness. Um Now, a few of you did suggest a few fixes. Um, one common issue that seems to happen with these things is... Um, you know, it, they just... They kind of wear out over time and the solder joints get, get a little bit crusty on the voltage select switch. And I've seen a few consoles that, you know, just touching up the solder joints on that will fix it. But like I said, I've had this thing apart because I was cleaning the shell, um, or at least I was going to clean the shell. I got this far as far as taking it apart goes. <laughs> But, um, I already got that one. I noticed something else on the motherboard, and I have a hunch that is the issue. So I'm going to see that is not the right screw. That is not what should have been in there. Okay. That is not the right screw either. Anyway, I think I know what the problem is. I'm going to pull this thing out of the shell just in case. Because we're going to be doing some soldering. And even though this is a junk shell, I do want to practice what I preach. And if you're doing soldering, you should always remove it from the plastic because it's very easy to accidentally, uh, you know, come at this with an angle and then, you know, rest the hot part of the iron on plastic and just ruin it. Why do you think this iron? looks the way it does because I did exactly that with this very recently. Anyway, comes out pretty easy, especially because I've already been in here. Someone's been in here. No, it was me. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So let me go ahead and, go ahead and boot up my soldering iron. And I'm thinking my problem is that little schmutz on the uh, system RAM chip there. I mean, all things considered, that seems more likely than, uh, than some of the other problems that have been suggested. But before I get to that, let's walk through some, some steps here. Let me get a uh, brush. Now, normally I use just like an old toothbrush or something, but I have recently come upon these bulk brushes here. Just clean that out. Make sure there's no loose junk blocking any cartridge pins, which I don't think there would be because it wouldn't pass the logo check if there was. But, just in case, let's try that. And, uh, you know what? Practice what I preach, one step at a time. Let's see if that worked. Again, really don't think it did, but we'll try. 
and we'll find out. Oh god, the buttons fell out. fell out too. Oh, and the speaker's not making any contact. But, still stuck. As I suspected. Okay, that's fine. Next, I have heard these solder joints are not all they're cracked up to be, and uh, trying to find something I can prop this up on so you can see what I'm doing. Something that isn't battery. That'll do. This thing. So this big silver box right here is the cartridge detect switch and what it does is it tells the Game Boy Advance whether you have a um, I need to prop this up on something different it tells the Game Boy Advance whether you have a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance cart inserted because if we look at the bottom of two games seriously? I don't understand how this happens to me. Uh, okay, well here's another game. If we look at the bottom of the two, you can see the Game Boy Color game has squared off corners, whereas the Game Boy Advance game has these notched corners. And that's all the Switch is doing. It's seeing, well, it's getting actuated by this notch. So when you insert a Game Boy Advance cart, this switch right here doesn't do anything. But when you insert a Game Boy Color cart, it gets depressed. Don't we all? Anyway. Anyway. Oh my god, it just barely fits. That's okay. This is fine. Voltaire here. Voltaire. Anyway, and just the uh, physical force of actuating that switch over and over and over and over again for the last 15 years just causes problems on some of these units. Causes these joints to snap. You know, everyone has their breaking point. Just go over each of them, make sure the joints are nice and shiny. I'll also get that one right here. I'll certainly try. There we go. That was a bit more solder than I wanted to add, but we're committed now. And let's get this last one. I've also seen some cases where the switch has to be disassembled and cleaned similar to the power switch. And I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I will say the method for cleaning the detect switch and the power switch are the exact same except one of them is, you know, 
bigger. Oh god. I'm gonna have to take this apart just to get the Game Boy out. There we go. A little undersized for this. And let's try it out. Again, don't think that was my fix, but if we don't try it after each thing, we'll never know what act, what it actually was, you know? And this time, I'll put a screw in instead of wasting time trying to get everything working. Found the cart, don't worry. Yep, same thing. Still not working. Okay, so last step is I'm thinking it's that RAM chip. Ooh, this thing is gross. So, in this particular case, I need something. That'll do. So, I'm just going to give this a little bit of scrapey scrape. Try and get the chunks of schmoo. Next, we're going to re-solder it, and I'm going to use a little bit of my hot air flux instead of my no-clean flux, because this stuff is a little bit stronger. Come on. There we go. Just going to smoosh that on there. It is uh, a little bit difficult to get out. That's probably a problem. I'll worry about that later. But uh, I'm just going to go for it. So one of the many wonderful things Flux does is it tends to, it can rather, clean up some corrosion. It'll clean up your parts before soldering. So specifically what I'm trying to do is, even though there's way too much solder on there, I'll clean it up later. I'm just making sure that the pins themselves are actually taking solder and judging by the fact that they're completely covered I'll uh, I'll take that as a yes so the next step is going to be to clean this up which a more skilled soldering wizard than I can probably just do with flux and his tip but unfortunately I am not that skilled not yet so I think I'm gonna use a little bit of a little bit of the wick here got some brand new 
solder work here. Never once tried it out. It's the first time for everything. I mean this specific brand. I've, I've used desoldering wick before. Between the shoulder button and the volume though, this is kind of a pain in the ass to get at. And just for the final touches though, I will use my no clean. Wink wink nudge nudge no clean. Should still absolutely clean it. Capacitor, I'm going to cook the darn thing off. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. other gooey stuff I do have to clean up. That shouldn't be too big. Just using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a cotton shrub. And the other side of this board looks pretty clean. Let's look at over here too. Freaking capacitor, man. I should have just removed it. Would have made my life easier. Alright, and unfortunately there is nothing we can do about the flux under the chip. Well, there's nothing I can do about the flux under the chip. I believe the only way to clean that effectively is either soaking this in isopropyl alcohol, which is entirely too expensive to do right now, um, especially on this board, it's just not worth it. Or an ultrasonic cleaner, which I don't have. And... Is this the right pack? Or this is? I don't know how that happened. Oh, I lost the power switch either way, though. Oh, well. This isn't the right back. Well, it is the right back. I don't... Uh. <laughs> it's the right back for the shell, but it's not the back I was using. Yeah, because it matches the schmoo on the... Uh, uh oh. Nope. Still nothing. Now that doesn't mean that wasn't the issue. It could have a bad system RAM, but I need to further troubleshoot it. I need my test card, and it's supposed to be in there. And I have no idea where my test card is. So I think that's pretty much it for today's video. Unfortunately, that wasn't the fix.
Let's just do a quick peek for more schmoo. Now I did end up cutting all these pins on this board because I was using it to uh, test fit something else and it just made my life easier. That has nothing to do with the problem I'm having right now. All the other pins look clear. I may have to uh, break out the multimeter and check continuity on, on these pins. Make sure all is still well there. Where this chip itself might be bad. Um, you know what, let me go find my test cart and we'll try that out. I don't see anything else with this. Be right back. Alright, couldn't find the test cart, but I did find something else. I found a flash card, which I reflashed to the test cart. So, we'll try that out. I have done nothing else to this board. It should boot to that, and it will probably, hopefully, give us a clue as to what's wrong with it. Slam that in there. Seriously, how did I lose my battery now? What is wrong with me? Alright, whatever this will do. I hope. Oh, I know how I lost the battery. So I replaced the wrong... Recover again. All right, let's see what we get. Well, that that was uh, <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen that work. Um, well, now I know there's something wrong with the memory. So, okay, that was my initial thought. Um, I probably should have led with that. But I don't really know how to fix this. Um, not saying it's not fixable. I'm just saying I don't know the best way to proceed from here. I think I'll have to... I think I'll have to make a part three to this freaking video. Which, technically, this is part two. Because the first part was part of my stream. I was doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I don't even have to pull that out. I'm fairly certain the problem is not the memory chip itself. But there's probably some corrosion under the chip. So I guess the next step is going to be to pull this chip. And uh, go from there. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to pull this and this, and probably this, and definitely this, so that I don't ruin them with the hot air. But hopefully it's just some corrosion or something under the chip. Anyway, I'm not going to do that tonight. I've got stuff to do. So thanks for watching, guys. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to fix this one tonight, but... We'll circle back again at some point. And uh, I really like the solder wick. This is some nice stuff. This is some MG Chemicals number 426. Good shit. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.